I don't, I don't believe in like texting. I don't believe in blogs. I just write uh, an occasional piece of my history down on one page. This one's called Vivian. Aunt Vivian, we kids called her Andy Bye, came once to stay with us while her husband Don was being treated at the San Fernando Veterans Hospital. He had been mustard gassed in the Argonne Forest in the First World War. Aunty Bai gave me a small leather notebook of his with page after page of closely spaced handwriting. This was his service journal, she told me. See his snapshot? I taped that inside the cover there only after I got him back from Europe. I'm superstitious. I only did that once he was safe. Picture me, a pudgy kid with a crew cut and horn rim glasses, staring down at a hawk-featured soldier, all pleats and ropey muscle in his fatigues. The doughboy I saw bore no resemblance to my current Uncle Don, gurgling away what little was left of his lungs in the San Fernando VA. Vi was a, a blowsy, a brassy little flounce of a woman, much given to costume jewelry, fake pearls, lipsticks, cigarettes, floral cotton dresses. She had a wicked, crowing laugh, and she enjoyed a can of beer or three. <laughs> she, she had a low, smoky voice with a hoarseness threaded through it like a, a rusty guitar string. When I asked about that, she said, carefully, she had been a bar girl in Chicago back in the 1920s and had once scalded her throat gulping down some unexpectedly hot tea. My old man laughed when he heard that. She ran with some of Capone's crowd, he said, to my complete bewilderment. Who the hell is Capone? Don caught a bootlegger trying to garret her for talking too much. Almost killed that guy before the cops came in and raided the place. Eh, she drank bad gin is all, said my mother, who was already tired of why after two weeks. And she ran afoul of the mob in Vegas after the war. Shit, honey, she's your aunt. Why don't you know this stuff? What's a garret? I asked. See, said my mother as my father rolled his eyes and they both sighed. A week later, we were on our way back from visiting Dawn, who was now slumped back helpless in the first oxygen tent I'd ever seen when mother decided to start needling dad. Why are you so grouchy, she picked on the way home through an intersection. You used to be so happy. You used to be at the heart of things. Vi, sitting next to me in the back seat, suddenly let go with a loud sob and scrabbled in her purse for a tissue. Oh, for Christ's sake, groaned my dad. Vi was gone when I got home from school the next day. The journal vanished later. And I only learned what a garret was in my sophomore year of college, but that's another story. <laughs>